Royal G is currently attempting a sheriff only challenge to Radiant. Hey guys, just as a heads up, I'm sheriff only. I'm not trying to troll you guys and I'll drop you guys guns. Oh my gosh, it's Royal G. Oh, and he's doing insane. How the hell did we win that? Cause like that game, we were like popping off. He's actively making the top 0.1% of the player base look like a joke. But I'm sure what you're all wondering is, how does he do it? What's up guys, I'm Zapper, your favorite Immortal 3 Yapper. In order to understand how Royal G dominates the upper echelons of the ranked ladder with only a sheriff, we will need to take a deeper look at Royal G's gameplay. In this video, we'll be looking at Royal G's aim, his movement, and most importantly, his decision making. And if you stick around until the end, I'll be sharing a super cool trick pros frequently abuse in order to stay ahead of the game. Let's get right into it. With a series about Sheriff Only, of course we need to take a look at mechanics. Aim. Is Royal G's aim something special? In order to find out, I first want to take a look at a few highlight clips from his recent matches. Oh my God. One day. Back. Get on site. I'm flank. There's two. Hey, one more, one more, two more, two more. Nice. Oh, he's concussed. Bad. Oh. Good job, nice round. At first glance, yeah, his aim's insane. But what about his aim makes it so good? And can us mortals ever hope to achieve aim on a similar level? The simple answer is yes. If we slow down the clips, he aims in a similar way each time. It's actually a very common aim style that you will see a lot. And it's very consistent. And easy to do. That's why most of the best players in the world love to do it. The bread and butter of his aim style is a fast flick to get close to the target and a very controlled microcorrection onto the target. Obviously, with his immaculate crosshair placement, he can often skip the first step of this aiming process and focus entirely on the microcorrection. Many players argue that the microcorrection should be slow, and while it should be slower than your initial flick, it doesn't have to be quote unquote slow per se. The best players in the world will do this micro so fast, the human eye can barely notice it. The real importance here isn't the speed of the micro correction, it's the accuracy of it. I mean, you could argue aiming slower helps with accuracy too, but from personal experience, this isn't always the case. If you are looking to reach a similar level of aim as Royal G, the way to achieve it is actually quite simple, and it ties back to the cool trick I'll be covering at the end of this video. So stick around if that's something you're interested in. And I don't mean to sound like a broken record here, but game sense is definitely going to play a bigger role in your games than aim, even if it doesn't always feel like it. That's why I think Royal G's decision making is really the key factor that sets him apart from your typical immortal player. But before we get into that, let's take a look at Royal G's movement. Dad. Gotcha, fun My turn. One seven. Swing. One seven. Triple, 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 backing up. Yeah. One enemy remaining. Uh, two out, two out, two out. One more out. One enemy remaining. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Nice. Oh. 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 Well done, guys. Good job, good job. There are a few key takeaways here. I'm sure most of you guys have noticed. He surprisingly crouches a lot. This is contrary to a lot of the advice coaches give nowadays, many even arguing to unbind crouch. Which brings me into my next point. His goal when moving is simply to become the hardest target possible. Originally, I assumed he wouldn't be doing much crouching with the sheriff because it's not a gun you typically spray. Despite most arguing that crouching makes you an easy target all the time, Royal G actually proves that when used properly, crouching can make you an insanely hard target to hit. I mean, crouching is the only way you can move your hitbox vertically while still being able to shoot back at the enemy. His peaks are beautiful as well. Almost every peak he takes is with just A or D, allowing him to peak at max velocity. Not to mention his beautiful counter strafing. Counter strafing is especially powerful with the Sheriff because you can only really shoot one shot at a time, unlike the Vandal. So by optimizing his movement, Royal G was able to minimize the disadvantage that one would originally assume is there 
while taking a duel between Rifle and Sheriff. I'd argue his enemies would even take a mental debuff each time they lost a duel to him. I mean, if you're at the top 0.1% and can't win your fights against a pistol, I don't know about you, but I'd definitely get tilted. At this point, I'm sure all of you watching can agree, Royal G is just on another level compared to his competition. But what is it that sets him apart even more than his immaculate mechanics? Well, that answer is simple. It's his brilliant decision making. Spike down. Good eye. That's really a fucking yeah. man. Two shit. One, one more, one more. I'm rotating. <laughs> On Sider, Raina's elbow. No I flank. Hey, they were both I'm blinding, blinding sight, I'm blinding sight, ready? Blinding. Alright, blinded, blinded. He's still stuck there. One enemy remaining. Nice A very common problem I see in lower rated players results from a very simple misconception. It's kind of a funny thing because it's the same problem people have with microcorrections when aiming. They assume that good decision making requires playing slow. This definitely isn't the case, and Royal G does an amazing job showcasing how quick decision making, when done properly, can make you a dangerous force to be reckoned with. The first clip is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. His plan was to throw a molly through the TP before teleporting. Oh, boy. That way, he could instantly shoot the enemies without having to open the door first. This is a very great strategy, but unfortunately, his teammate went down before he could execute his plan. With his quick decision making, instead of trashing the idea and rotating spawn like most players would in this situation, he instantly teleports to get the trade on the distracted enemies. Because he knows the exact location of the enemies and the enemies are still busy getting reoriented after the duel. This gave Royal G an amazing timing to go for a pick. It's a great decision and it was done in a split second too. He actually manages to pull off something similar several times within this same clip. After getting his initial pick with his timing, he knows he can't just flat out duel the next enemy holding him. This is for many different reasons, but the main one is simply the enemy is ready for his peek. Instead of peeking right away, he spams the wall with his sheriff. You will notice him doing this a lot by the way, and yes it's great for throwing off enemy cross replacement, which is what it does here, but he is also simultaneously leveraging an advantage that the sheriff has over the vandal and phantom. What is that advantage? high wall penetration. In a battle of spam, he's gonna win because his sheriff will do much more damage and also allows him the benefit of being more mobile. So when his enemies do try spamming him back, he can easily peek out quickly for a free kill. He knows after picking off two in hookah that he has a great timing to flank the rest of the enemies. Unfortunately, he does get caught off guard by the chamber. This is where we see the power of his quick decision making come fully into the light though because despite the fact that he wasn't ready for the fight, the chamber wasn't ready either. Since neither of them were ready, Royal G got the perfect opportunity to show off his superior mechanics. From here, you could argue he made a misplay by rushing into Hookah, but I'd argue otherwise, because he did have his teammate right behind him, theoretically giving them a 2v1 advantage if they were to encounter another enemy. It's unfortunate, but the opposing team did make a great play, flashing out the smoke with a double peek. And again, we see the brilliance of Royal G's quick decision making. Although it's more of a mechanical one, he understands that he's at the end of his rope here and takes advantage of the extra time crashing will buy him and fully commits to it, ultimately helping him secure his 4k before going down. And guess what? Thanks to his quick decision making, he sets his jet up perfectly to secure the round. Ultimately, they go on to win the entire game, despite the odds. Which begs the question, how do players reach a similar level to that of Royal G while others go on to be hard stuck the rest of their lives? The answer is actually quite simple, and while it's likely not what you're expecting, it's also probably not what you're wanting to hear. The cool trick pros use to stay ahead of the game has to do with boredom. I know you might be a little confused, but hear me out for a second. Isaac Newton discovered gravity simply by watching an apple fall from a tree. This discovery was groundbreaking at the time and integral to our current understanding of the world around us. And to think, if Newton was chilling by that tree staring at TikTok, I don't know man, I just don't think he would have figured it out. So the key takeaway is this, allow yourself to be bored. 
especially when you feel stuck. This boredom you feel also happens to be your brain's time for self-reflection. So next time you die in Valorant, instead of instantly checking your phone or going on TikTok, just sit with it for a bit. Be bored. Because it's in your moments of boredom that you make breakthroughs, overcome your biggest plateaus, and even ascend to new heights. Oh, you're the king. Oh my 